Well hey there, you're on the internet, I have some free time, and welcome to the Triple N Network, where all you newbie nib nerds can find all the news you'll need. Let's look at an ink today, shall we? Now, today's ink, I have in a very unusual sample form. Uh, this was sent to me by my Belgian penefactor, who said I could name him uh, Tristan. So, let's all thank Tristan. One, two, three. Thanks. Thanks, Tristan. Now, this is, of course, one of the Ackerman inks he sent me in this uh, sushi soy sauce packet. He washed it out first, and uh, it's Ackerman number 14. Uh, I'm going to massacre this. Pot pop pooper. Yeah, I lived in Amsterdam for a month. I'm sorry. I And they spoke perfect English, too. Uh, anyways, uh... I didn't... I... I... Okay, my camera's turning this a little bluish, so I shall fix it in post. If not, I shall leave a message here, if there are pictures afterwards, like scanned pictures at the end. Okay. Now, this is a very... I mean, it's like a jolly purple. Honestly, the, the thing that comes to mind is Easter purple. This reminds me of Easter purple. Yeah, so... Anyways, the two pens I used were these. This is a pen and ink sketch with a broad nib, and actually for a broad nib, it's very moderate. In fact, I'd probably say it's like a 4.5 out of 10 naturally, so it's slightly on the dry side. Now, in my tests, I say that this is an extra fine Knox Avicenna. However, I also have one in blue, and I'm pretty sure the blue is the extra fine. The gray is actually just fine. However, and I really hope I can get this on camera today. Come on. I can't, the angle's all wrong. But anyways, the, uh, the feed, it, it actually has some space, like I can stick my, my fingernail between it. Uh, they won't line up no matter what I do. So the only way this works is if it's running really wet. Luckily this pen is really wet. However, that means that when we get to the cheaper paper tests, there's going to be some issues, so something to be aware of. Now, thought I'd see if I could find some comparisons. Uh, yeah, I found some comparisons, but the thing is, there's actually something about this ink that's rather, uh, I don't know, it's hard to put my finger on. But anyways, here's Park Pop Purple and Vmail North African Violet by Noodlers. And the thing is, they're actually very similar. However, there's there's almost like a tiny bit more pinkness to Park Pop. Uh, it's a little brighter. Uh, but yeah, so ridiculously similar. However, this one had amazing properties. Uh, another one that I had that was kind of close was Private Reserve Purple Mojo. But as you can see, that's a bit darker. And it's more saturated. This one has decent saturation, but I mean, Private Reserves do tend to have a, a little extra something, something in them. Next is Bay State Concord Grape by Noodlers, which you can see is darker and is just so intense because, uh, I mean, it's a Bay State, so, yeah. Uh, next up is Noodlers Purple Martin, which I included because I don't know if this will come through, but, uh, like, through here, there's a little bit more pink, and then, like, up through here, there's more blue, and the areas where there's more pink uh, kind of reminded me of that. And then lastly, I decided to include it because it is a very popular purple, is uh, Mont Blanc's Lavender Purple, which you can see is drastically different. There is a lot more red in Lavender Purple. But yeah. Alright, so, that's that. Let's check out the chromatography. Now, here's the chromatography as it is meant to be. You can see where the initial drop, was ink was, drop of ink was put, and you can see that there's a band of something resisting going up, but there is a slightly darker band up at the top. Now, here's why I let it dry, which is not how you're supposed to do it. You can see the dot got a little bit darker, and the stuff up at the top is not quite as dark and distinct. I wanted to see what it could sort of stand up against, so here are some chemical tests. Here's water, and actually cleaned out of the pens with water very easily. Uh, I'd say, like any other standard ink, maybe not as easily as something really watery, like most J.R. Bonds or uh, Waterman's Florida Blue. 
That stuff is so watery, it'll practically wash itself out. Sorry, I don't like that stuff. Anyways, uh, very easy to clean out. Just water, flushed it, came right out. One third bleach solution. I don't know if the camera will show this because of what it's doing with color. But I made it turn much more blue. This is much more of a um, lilac, maybe? I don't know. Indigo. There we go. Indigo is mostly blue with hints of purple, so that's kind of what that is. Uh, ammonia pen flush really broke it up. It really did. So if for some reason, like, let's say you leave this ink in your pen for like uh, two months and it completely dries out, I have no hesitation to say ammonia pen flush. We'll get it right out. Hydrogen peroxide got it moving, but I don't know. There's Like, do you see how it didn't break apart the paper the way that even water or any of these did? I don't know what was happening, so that kind of unnerved me. Moving on to paper test. Top down in density, clear fontaine, 90 grams per square meter. Yep. Now, there's not a ton of shading in this ink. Uh, I call it soft shading because it is it is kind of soft. It's shut, it's subtle. There's not a there's not a ton of it. You kind of have to pay attention, you know, like so, you know, part way down on these H's, you know, or you know that and that and the A. You know, it's it's not. It's not in your face. So if you don't love shading, put in something that's a little more dry writing, like this broad, and you really won't get a lot of it. And, uh, yeah, you can see just in these smears that that broad is a bit more dry writing, and that fine, I know I say it's an extra fine, but it, I think it is the fine pretty wet. Here, you do see a little bit more shading, but I went over it twice to see if I could get anything. Now it's very well behaved, no bleed, no feather, no spread, no echo, no sheen. I did have a tiny bit of problem along this edge, but I think that's environmental. I think that's, I mean, like there, that's the only thing. And then those two dots. I was approaching the bottom of the block, so that's just something that happens when paper is exposed to air for a long time. So, yeah. There is some water resistance. It did dye the page, and because that broad puts down less ink, because it's drier, not as much remains, but there is a little something. So, uh, you may not lose everything. Next up is Fabriano, 85 grams per square meter. Again, not a ton of shading. It's very soft shading. You see a little in the scrubby. Uh, again, I mean, that fine is, it's pretty wet, guys. And so it took 18 seconds. The broad, being a bit dry, took 17. And I would say that the flow of this ink, or at least my sample, judging by what I know of those pens and their performance, I'd say it's a 5.5. Maybe a 5. Yeah, I'd say it's right in the middle. It does, you know, it just goes. You don't have to fight with it. Uh, in a dry nib, you know, you might have to tap it a few times if you leave the nib uh, exposed for, like, a couple minutes. But very well behaved. You know, I mean, you, and honestly, I'm glad that it was 5.5 because, I mean, with how wet it was coming out of that wet fine. Mm. But yeah, so, anyways, the ink, very soft shading. If you don't love shading, this could be a really good one for you. If you don't like shading, you like purple, this is definitely worth looking into. No bleed, no feather, no spread, no echo, no sheen. Very well behaved. All good. Now, the water test, we kind of see more of the same. Because that extra fine put down more ink, a little bit more remains. A lot of it did wash off, and it did dye the page. The dots are super clear, though, so that's kind of interesting. Next up is Rhodia, 80 grams per square meter. Again, we kind of, I mean, I start saying in these uh, little write ups, I'm like, yeah, you know, uh, more the same, because, you know, it doesn't really change. It, it's true, there's not a lot of shading. In the scrubby, I went over that top one uh, twice, which is why you see a bit more. Uh, yeah, that fine took 16 seconds, the broad took 17. Yeah, it's very well behaved. No bleed, no feather, no spread, no echo, no sheen. All good. And again, the water test. Oops, sorry. Oh god, I keep knocking the camera. Uh, yeah, that extra fine is actually right along the same lines as that broad. If you had to recover it, you could. The dots are super clear. It dyed the page. So, eh, there's that. Next up is Tomoe River Paper, which is known for drawing out shading and sheen, and dry times, and echo. So if you're very sensitive to it, it's something you should, you know, be very aware of if you're going into this paper. Now, because of the way this uh, paper works, and it makes sort of ink pool up 
in, in certain ways because it takes so long to dry, uh, we get a very different experience to the point where there is no shading in that extra fine just because it takes so long to dry that it allows the ink to pool up sort of evenly across an entire letter. So we don't really get shading. But uh, yeah, because it's so wet, it took 25 seconds to dry. Which, you know, here I, I still thought I was an extra fine, so 25 seconds for an extra dry to extra fine to dry sounded insane, but I think it's just a fine, and this is very saturated ink. This, this ink never once manages to look thin, not in a smear, not in a scrubby, not even in this smear on here. It doesn't look thin. There is plenty of ink in this ink. It's not oversaturated, but it is well saturated. Now, uh, I don't know if this is going to show up on... Oh, there we go. There is something going on here. I don't know what I would call that in color. But there is sort of like a hazy shininess to the absolute wettest parts. And we we don't really see it in the writing. It's only where I laid it on really thick in the scrubby. Yeah, so the broad took 22 seconds to dry. But you can see the smear. I mean, that is a slightly dry broad, so yeah. Anyways, uh, no bleed, no feather, no spread. There might be some echo, just because this is such a solid color. It's not necessarily dark, but it is a very solid color. And this paper is very thin. So if you are super sensitive to it... Uh, and, I mean, I did lay it on pretty thick in the scrubby, so that might be more of a human error thing. But this paper loves to let ink slide away when you add more water. And it actually didn't so much here. I mean, it did dye the page. But that's pretty clear. If you had to recover that, I think you could. There's enough there to read. Now, for the next three tests, I only used the extra fine. But considering how wet that was running, I don't know if that was even that much of a fair decision. So here we go. Uh, here's the world's worst 20 pound coffee paper. And we are going to see a good deal of spread. Now, we're comparing these three lines to here. Yeah, if, you, if we look at spread, that pretty much is the same size as that broad. There is a lot of spread. However, the purple is still very bright. It's very vibrant. And uh, it's very solid. And it doesn't lose the vibrancy the way it, uh, some inks can when you put it on more absorbent paper. There is no shading. And there is a, a very distinct wooliness. Three seconds to dry. And we do get feathering. In fact, if we look back at spread, we see feathering. Or feathering. There's feathering there. Yeah, uh, not great. However, we don't, we don't get full bleed through. We do get a lot of little dots starting to sort of like poke their heads out. You know, see like, oh, what's going on over here? We see how it's still very light. They never make it to the other side. And this is what clued me into maybe using the broad would have been more fair. That's the broad. Oop. That's the broad right there. This is the extra fine. Yeah, so there's that. Water test. Now more absorbent papers tend to draw the ink in, make it harder to wash out. And that's kind of what happened here. So that's why it's very clear, very dark. It did dye the page. It, it actually... I mean, it spread a bit more, but it didn't explode. You know, there's not feathers everywhere. It could be a heck of a lot worse. If you had to recover that, I think you absolutely could. Next up is me notebook paper. And this is actually from like a five-star journal, not like a composition notebook. And lately, this stuff has been feathering like crazy. And so we do get a lot of feathering, as demonstrated by the word feathering. But that's kind of a recent thing. It wasn't always doing that. But again, this is just such a darn wet pen. And it's a pretty saturated ink, so I'm not shocked that there's some feathering. However, we do have a very solid color. It is very bright. We don't get nearly as much spread as we did with the 20 pound. See how the line isn't nearly as broad? So that's nice. And then we don't get any bleed. We have no bleed. You see how this is all very hazy and light? We do get echo. There is significant echo. But again, this is thinner than 20 pound copier paper. It is cheaper, both in price and quality. Actually, I'm not sure I can say it is cheaper in quality, considering how bad this did. So, mm. 
We do get echo. This would be kind of uncomfortable to write on the other side. However, it didn't fully break through. It didn't render onto the page below. So that's nice. Uh, this paper does tend to freak out when you add water. However, it kind of didn't here. Uh, it did sort of double down on spread. It might have feathered a little bit more, but not a ton. That's pretty clear, pretty tame. If you had to recover that, you could. Guide the page a bit, but... I mean, if your, life if your life depended on it, you could recover that. Now lastly is moleskin paper, which I hate because it hates ink. And of course this is where it falls apart. Now, something kind of strange happened with the color. I know that this is cream, so there's going to be kind of a, already a bit of a, a contrast thing going on. But this got kind of hazy. Where I'd say this is like an Easter purple, this is more of a lilac. It's slightly dustier? I don't know. It's it. So, and it, that didn't happen with the Tomoe River, which is also a cream paper, so I don't know, but also we get this. Come on, camera. There we go. I mean, look at bright. Look at those feathers. And we get them in a lot of places. Granted, this is a very wet fine nib, but Still, I mean, it's, meh. I mean, we get it in the broad, which is a very dry writing one. Like, we get lots of little feathers up here. Ugh. We don't really get shading. I went over it twice there, but no, and it took nine seconds to dry. I, the color is still pretty intense, but it's a different, it, it's sort of like a dustier lilac color. I don't know. However... As I say here, there is no bleed. There is some something. You know, it definitely sunk into the paper, but it didn't sink so far in that it started to peek out the other side. Which really surprised me. Usually this paper is like the first to bleed. But I don't know, considering how much it feathered, maybe it just put its efforts elsewhere. Yeah, the uh, water test, it didn't dye the page nearly as much, but it did really, I mean, it like tripled down on feathering. Look at that. That's intense. If you wrote in cursive, and if you wrote small, like everyone in the world but me, that would not be the easiest thing in the world to recover. Yep. So, there you go. Ackerman 14, Park Pop Purple. Or Park Pop Purple. Because purple is hard for me to say. Uh, yeah, it's, a, it's an intense purple. Honestly, this is exactly what I think of when I think of Easter purple. Uh, yeah, it did it, it, okay in a dry writing abroad on the cheap papers. Uh, not a ton of shading. If you don't like a ton of shading but you like a, an intense ink, uh, give this a try. If you have a pen that's uh, slightly wet and you don't like it, maybe put this in it. Or no, I mean, if you don't like wet ink, this, is, this really is a 5 out of 5. This is not a wet ink. This just goes. Uh, no sheen, but I, I don't know. I kind of liked it, and I don't, I don't like a lot of purples, so this, this wasn't too bad. Uh, so there you go, for your consideration from the Triple N Network. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe to the channel. And thanks for watching. Bye.